Dr. Halade. Yes, uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, I'm very pleased with your kind introduction and we'll begin. Okay, here is my title. Uh, we are focusing on inflammation and resolution of inflammation. As we all know that the heart is uh, very responsive to many emotions, like it serves as a funny, fabulous, and sometimes it's courageous and gorgeous. But in this uh, webinar next 40, 45 minutes, we are focusing on uh, how the heart responds to heart attack as an injury with major focus on inflammation resolution and the non-resolving inflammation if the repair is not done on time. Now, at the physiological level, heart receives waste in the form of gases, then exchange at the lung, and then again, takes the oxygen and nutrients to different parts of the body. Basically, heart, particularly left ventricle, serve as a main pump works with the vessels as a pipe and coordinates with the lung and kidney for the gases and the liquid exchange. So it has a major role in the body. It starts even before our birth when its inception starts. Now, if we see the fold of cardiovascular, there is a tremendous progress has been done. Uh, this is the image of uh, Eugene Braunwald, is a father of cardiology. And we learned that the, the atherosclerosis begin formation of a plaque in coronary artery that leads to myocardial infarction event and then further arrhythmia remodeling and eventually the heart failure as an end stage disease. There are many issues that are resolved and some are unresolved. As we made a progress, there are more challenges or problems because of the continuous epidemic of the obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and inevitable aging. Now, as we learn that the heart attack leads to change in size, shape, and function of the left ventricle leading to the cardiac remodeling and heart failure, during this process, the leukocytes enter at the site of infarction or injury, and if they don't exit on time, that leads to unresolved or non-resolving inflammation, which is common in the cardiometabolic defects or cardiometabolic uh, syndrome, or including the aging. Now, if we study the inflammation or see the history of inflammation, Classically, we know that the inflammation majority coming from infection, including the current pandemic COVID-19 or the work-related injury. Therefore, we are developing either vaccine, antibiotics, or non steroidal anti-inflammatory to block or the, kill the virus or the germs. Now, there are different spectrum of inflammation which is coming from our daily lifestyle, like overnutrition, inaction, or altered sleep wake up cycle, or some inevitable factors like aging, or some invited factors like the smoking, its transition to the vaping, or medication like uh, painkillers or oncological drugs. So the source of inflammation is uh, changing as we are evolving. Now, the big question is why to study the heart failure? No matter which continent we live, that three to 4% of the patient die in hospital after arriving to the hospital. Now remaining 40 to 50% of the people die within a one year of hospital, uh, within the one year of myocardial infarction event. And then rest of the all people develop or patients develop the chronic heart failure due to the injured heart. Now, if we see in the mouse using high resolution ultrasound echocardiography, you will see that the mouse heart is function perfectly right uh, without in absence of injury. Now this high resolution ultrasound shows that the, is basically divided into 48 dots and each dot gives one single line as a green vector indicates the strength of myocardium during systole coming inward and during diastole is going outward. Whereas the strain, and this again is 
each section of the heart showing the synchrony means this is everything is synchrony and then the ECG is intact. But when we ligate the coronary artery under the microscope, then you will notice that with the time, the mice left ventricle is completely dysfunctional and the majority function is coming only from the remote area. The strain is impaired, impaired and there is a dysynchrony as well as obvious ST elevation due to coronary ligation. Now, if we see at the structural level, before this is the histology, HNE staining, and this is the mid cavity of the left ventricle. After a myocardial infarction, there is a continuous wall thinning and obvious beginning of the apoptosis from day one onwards and complete necrosis in the infarcted region and the peri-infarct region, suggesting that this remodeling is irreversible at the same time, this continuous remodeling that necrosis is replaced by compact patchy fibrosis in chronic heart failure that begins in acute heart failure from day five onwards. And there is a patchy fibrosis in peri region, suggesting that there is a continuous remodeling. Now, if you compare between the mice versus human pathophysiology, I had, a, had an opportunity to interact with the heart failure patient, Cynthia Chauhan. She had a 33 active diagnosis and she had all symptoms of uh, the heart failure like fatigue, activity limitation, congestion, edema, and shortness of breath. Now, if we see the mice, and you have to take my words, this is the mice you're seeing after the coronary ligation, uh, within 24 hours, mice is moving back to normal life. And then particularly in a chronic heart failure, uh, which is a day 56, and if you correlate day 56 to the mice day 56 to the human age, almost approximately 10 years, and the mice are physiologically normal. So there is a quite difference between the human and the mice pathophysiology. So because the animals don't get heart attack and the people do, therefore we ask the question, why mice heals after the heart attack with the hypothesis, identify the mechanism by which leukocytes clean up the damage of infarcted myocardium and modulate the healing process. Here we not only focus on the heart, but also consider the spleen to distinguish inflammation and resolution markers. For inflammation, we focused on leukotrienes and prostaglandins. And for resolution of inflammation, we measured specialized pro-resolving mediators like resolvins, lipoxin, protectins, and myrcins, especially biosynthesized from fatty acids, uh, which are majority marine oils or the fish oils. Now, as an inclusion criteria, when the fractional shortening below 10 is considered as a heart failure mouse uh, for day one and day five, an infected area is above 45%. And obviously you will notice by this um, ultrasound images, there is a dysfunction at day one and day five, obviously wall thinning by histology and the beginning of the fibrosis at day five, suggesting that it is a pr profound remodeling after coronary ligation. Now, here we measure the leukocytes with the major focus on monocytes, neutrophils, and macrophages in the NIU controls, even in absence of a sham ligation, you will notice that the spleen and LV have a few traces of the monocytes and few M2 macrophages as a reparative. And this uh, for we digested the heart and spleen using collagenase and quantitated the mononuclear suspension using the flow cytometry. In response to injury, what we notice that the spleen and the left ventricle at both location, there is activation of neutrophils, monocytes, and macrophages. Neutrophils are stained here with the 
Lysix-G positive and macrophages as F480. Another important point you will notice that inflammatory and resolving markers are activated simultaneously both in spleen and left ventricle. Further, if we expand at day five, that expansion is relatively higher at the site of injury, which is infected area compared to the spleen, but indicating that the spleen and LVs activated simultaneously as well as inflammatory and resolving response activated in the both organs. And these leukocytes are quantitated here. The filled circle is heart and the open circle is a spleen. And you will notice that these leukocytes are relatively higher at the site of injury. And this one here is a percentage population. Now, we ask question, what do leukocytes carry with them? Here, you will notice on the y-axis, picogram to 50 milligram of the heart tissue. These leukocytes carrying humongous amount of fatty acids that we measured in the spleen and left ventricle. In response to MI at day one, they are car carrying large number of decosahexaenoic acid, arachidonic acid, as well as eicosapentaenoic acids. And DHA and EPA are the, uh, are the omega-3 fatty acids. And here is a Venn diagram indicating that there is enriched component of a DHA in left ventricle and spleen, and which is activated in response to MI. Further, as these leukocytes are bringing the fatty acids, next, next we ask the question, are they bringing the fat, fat busting enzyme, which is mainly immune responsive enzyme like uh, five lipoxygenase 12 and 15. Here again, the fill circle is hard. You will notice that all these three lipoxygenase are activated in response to MI, but they are enriched in the infected heart. But if we compare the cyclooxygenase, which is another uh, fat busting enzyme, mainly responsible for making the prostaglandins, COX-2, you will notice that as an open circle, they are enriched in the spleen, indicating that the activated site of injury is higher loxes, whereas the coxes are higher in the spleen. Next question we ask, what do leukocytes do at the infoxic site? For that one, we applied lipid extraction methodology and extracted the lipids by using target, and then we run the targeted analysis uh, by running the mass spectrometry. Now, what we notice, particularly in the heart, without MI, there are only 4% of specialized pro-resolving mediators or the precursors of those mediators. But within a 24 hours, these SPMs are increased to 18% and further there is expansion to 20% in response to coronary ligation. And here, the multiple reaction monitoring traces and precise mass spectrum gram for protecting D1 and resolving D1. And here is a list of the species of the SPMs. Now, this is from the left ventricle. Curiously, we ask what is happening in the spleen. Before in MI itself in the naive state, the spleen has only 13% of the SPMs. But in response to MI, this SPMs lower to 9% again by day five, again back to normal as a 13%. Here is multiple reaction monitoring traces and the example of mass spectrometrogram resolving D1 and resolving D5. Now, if you compare side by side, left ventricle and the spleen, what you will notice, in absence of injury, less amount of SPMs, in the LV, but higher in the spleen. Now, in response to injury after coronary ligation, spleen is reduced, but as the leukocytes are mobilized to the infected heart, there is enrichment of SPMs in the infected area, and there is further expansion of those 
SPMs in the heart, but at the same time, spleen regain the SPMs content. Now, it means the leukocyte directs the SPM biosynthesis at the site of injury. Now, the key question we ask, as many of you answer correctly, that, okay, inflammation begins with a resolution. Here you will notice that the leukotriene B4 is one of the primary pro-inflammatory mediators, which is going high as a filled circle in the infected heart with enrichment of the infiltration of the macrophages. At the same time, the spleen as open circle, the leukotriene B4 is going down indicating that the leukocytes are mobilizing to the spleen. But the same times when the leukotriene B4 is increased, the same time the fill circle as the heart, the lipoxin B4 is also increased and the aspirin triggered lipoxin A4, indicating that pro-inflammatory and resolving mediators are balanced in LV healing post-MI, and they are biosynthesized simultaneously with leukocyte infiltration. Now, next question we ask, what is the role of macrophages? Because if we deplete the macrophages, that leads to high mortality and pathological remodeling. And the macrophages role is studying in different models in a different uh, cardiovascular biology. We are studying the lipid chemistry and association with a biology. Uh, macrophages has a role in the ECG conduction uh, with relevance to the connexin 43. Also has a profound role in atherogenesis. And we are more investigating or started initiating how the SPMs are biosynthesized with the help of macrophages. And we realize uh, it's just the beginning of studying the SPMs in the heart cardiac role, uh, macrophages role in cardiac biology. Now for this one, we deplete the macrophages by injecting the clodronate. Here is a study design before ligation itself. Obviously, if we are injecting the clodronate, the macrophages content will go down from 20 to 40%, depending on the dose and duration. What we notice is that the lipoxygen is particularly the 5, 12, and 15, all three lipoxygenes are lower due to depletion of clodronate compared to the control mice uh, as a response to coronary ligation. Also, we notice second thing that the cyclooxygenase were higher compared to the control mice due to the clodronate depletion. Surprisingly, the many SPMs were undetected due to the clodronate injection and very few mediators were detected as a result of clodronate injection. So what we conclude from this one that in response to coronary ligation or cardiac injury, the leukocytes arrive at the site of injury and they biosynthesize SPMs with the help of fatty acids and immune responsive enzymes, lipoxygenase, that leads to resolution. But if we deplete the macrophages by using the clodronate, obviously there is a deficiency of SPMs leading to non-resolving inflammation, which is happening in coordination with the spleen and heart leading to splenocardiac model. Now, this is time to audience poll, and I will pass on to Sam, please. Th thank you, Ganesh. Uh, yeah, we'd like to um, get to know our audience a little bit better uh, and give Ganesh a quick break. Uh, so what is your role in the lab? Uh, are you a professor, a postdoc, perhaps a PhD or MSc candidate? Uh, lab manager, a PI, um, clinician, or other. Um, we have quite a wide variety uh, of attendees. Um, majority uh, are professors and uh, PIs, so it's uh, great to know. And uh, just give you guys about five more seconds. I think most of you guys have answered. I uh, thank you guys for participating in this poll. Uh, and I'll send this back to Ganesh. Thank you, Sam. Now, uh, I have shown the picture of the, you know, the mice moving after 
the heart attack uh, in a chronic heart failure. So we ask what is the physiological and pathological inflammation because mice develops the injury from minutes to hours to days and there is optimal healing with the activation of loxus and coxus that leads to biosynthesis of SPNs. But in humans is a different case because the disease progression is from months to years and sometimes in decades. And there are a number of risk factors, including the metabolic defects to the co-medication and aging. So the pathophysiology is diverse if we compare to the mice, because the most important aspect, the coronary artery is um, disease, whereas the mouse coronary artery is a clean. So therefore we ask different question test whether excess influx of omega-6 fatty acid impair resolution program in heart failure in aging. We precisely the supplement mice with the two months of the fat exposure, and that is only 10% and uniquely enriched with the safflower oil. Why safflower oil? Because it contains high amount of linoleic acid, which is a common in our processed food or fried products, what we eat outside. And that feeds uh, as a substrate arachidonic acid to cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase. Here is our study design, not only the young, but we also use the aging mice of 18 months old, fed them on a two months safflower oil diet or lab chart as a control and then subjected to the coronary ligation. And then the study, the lipoxygenase signaling and heart failure metabololipidome. Now, obviously before coronary ligation, you will notice here left ventricular mid cavity. Uh, there is no structural change in all four groups, young and old, as well as SO or control diet. In response to coronary ligation, the wall thinning is very obvious in the all four groups. There are few changes in the remote area, but to our surprise, what we notice, all three lipoxygenase, we are responsible for the biosynthesis of SPMs. Those were lower, five locks, 12 and 15 in response to diet. And surprisingly, the TNF-alpha, which is inflammatory marker, which is higher, particularly in the aging mice. Now, what we notice at this point that particularly these pro-inflammatory macrophages Li6C high, those were higher in aging mice. Another important finding that the neutrophils are increased both in the young and old mice, which are supplemented with safflower oil diet indicating that the diet is one of the major component that is driving the leukocyte population, both at the neutrophils level, as well as the macrophages levels, and also changing the phenotypes of the macrophages. At the global level, we studied the very comprehensive lipidome shown here, but more precisely what we noticed that the diet alone changes 38 lipid mediators, or lipid species, but age alone changing 19 and in combination 49. And by using the principal component analysis, what we notice that the young and aging, the control mice responding similarly, they are superimposed on each other, but the mice young and aging, which are fed on the SO diets, they are responding completely different in response to injury. Here is a complete list of lipid mediators that you will see in the publication. But more precisely, if we see the DHA lipidome, what we notice that before MI itself, the precursor of resolving species, those are lower due to high amount of omega-6 fatty acids in the diet. Now, in response to injury, what we notice that this difference is enlarged and this young and old mice both 
have lower levels of the precursors of resolvins as well as resolving product. So indicating that these resolving species are more responsive to the enrichment of diets uh, like uh, omega-6 fatty acids. Now, what I have shown you in brief is when the young and aging, when there is a balance of the fatty acids that leads to activation of the different lipoxygenase, leads to biosynthesis of resolving DNE series resolvings, and also that helps to control the inflammation, helping the multi-organ inflammation. Imagine if the current epidemic or the different processed food or products which are enriched with the omega omega fatty acids that's leading to the epidemic epidemic of the obesity dyslipidemia and hyperglycemia these are the prime components that of the dysregulated inflammation with lower levels of dne series and higher inflammation impairing the cardiac repair which is common uh, even in the cardiorenal inflammation or cardiorenal network failure now as a training, by training, I'm a pharmacist, so I plan to use two terms. Uh, one, to help and at least uh, do not harm. The reason I bring this point, because as we know, there is a dysregulated resolution of inflammation or defective resolution of inflammation, and also the non anti-inflammatory paradox. If you... Uh, see some of the literature that you will see that the risk of acute myocardial infarction with non anti-inflammatory drugs in real use. And there are a number of reports are there. Uh, that's why we ask the question that what is the cellular and molecular mechanism and test whether carfrofane impaired splenic leukocyte directed acute inflammation resolving response in cardiac injury. Now, this is our study design in which the carfrofane were injected to the risk-free mice for two weeks, uh, maintaining the non-carfrofane treated mice. Uh, imagine that many individuals uh, take the carfrof uh, ibuprofen uh, as a painkiller for longer duration of time, uh, depending on the situation. To translate this kind of scenario, we designed this study and as an outcome, we study inflammation and resolution markers, heart strain and function, leukocyte profiling, and the leukocyte straining. And this is published in Journal of Leukocyte Biology. Now, obviously, um, there is no change in the structure and function due to carfrofane treatment. Obviously, in response to cardi cardiac injury, the wall thinning is various in both group, the carfrofane and without carfrofane, as well as left ventricle dysfunction shown here uh, that is measured using high resolution ultrasound echocardiography. Now, further, we did very comprehensive leukocyte profiling from A to Z and both in the spleen as well as left ventricle. More precisely, what we notice even absence of injury, both spleen and LV, because of the carfrofane, the splenic neutrophils are free activated at both location in the spleen as well as a left ventricle. Here you will see that the splenic neutrophils are activated and there are few traces of the neutrophils are present in the left, ventric left ventricles and this is in absence of injury. This is most important point. Now, what we notice in response to injury, again, we repeat the same profile in these four groups and both in the spleen and left ventricle. Here, during the processing of these samples, particularly in the left ventricle, we notice there are a number of cells are dead even during the processing, indicating that leukocytes are very fragile or immunosuppressive nature of non anti-inflammatory drugs. More precisely, what we notice that subacute cap treatment amplified neutrophils in the infected area. 
as the leukocytes mobilize from spleen to heart, therefore there are lower neutrophils in the spleen, even though it is captured and non captured But here, in response to injury, usually we notice five to 10% neutrophils to repair the heart. But here, because of the carprofen treatment, the neutrophils density is higher from 20 to 25%, indicating there is a neutrophil swarming. Now, we all know that any kind of injury, uh, or including the pan, uh, ant bite, that leads to clearance versus non-clearance mechanism uh, by eat me or don't eat me signal, particularly the macrophages play a very important role in this mechanism because they express the MRTK or SERF1 alpha and coordinate with the apoptotic body. And if that apoptotic body expressed CD47 or other uh, apoptotic resisting signals that leads to non-clearance or dysregulated resolution. So there is always a competition of eat me signal and did, don't eat me signal in response to injury or during the wound healing process. Now, what we notice that due to CAP treatment, their intensified inflammatory response post MI, particularly, you will notice that here CD47 is higher in response to cardiac injury as well as there is higher levels of number of cytokines like interleukin B, CCL2, and tumor necrosis factor alpha, indicating that the amplified inflammation and defective resolution of inflammation. Now, next question we ask, okay, where did CD47 is expressed, whether it is defective macrophages or the defective neutrophils? Precisely, we notice that the spleen before MI itself expressing higher CD47, and obviously that is amplified both in the spleen as well as LV in response to MI, indicating that the subacute cap treatment dysregulated neutrophils markers as well as function. Further, more specifically, we use high resolution image stream flow cytometry, what we notice that the, in response to injury, there is activation of the apoptotic markers as a brain, and then red is a macrophages, which are F480 positive, and the neutrophils is a Ly6G positive. In the overlay, you will notice that in optimal condition, in absence of a carprofane, that macrophage are trying to angle the neutrophils. But this process is reversed because of the cap treatment, the neutrophils are pre-activated and they are trying to engulf the macrophages. Particularly here, you will notice that this process is complete and delayed resolution. So what I have shown you is that the inflammation is in balance or in sync with the resolution and it starts simultaneously in which the leukocytes timely get in and they leave the area with the get out signals that leads to cardio, cardiac repair as a physiological response and where the spleen and the infected area is in sync with the cardiac repair. But in when there are different risk factors like obesity, aging, or the painkillers, then it leads to impaired cardiac repair where the inflammation is more dominant, where the resolution is less. And these inflammation and resolution serve as a two sides of the same coin and run parallel together in cardiac repair. Now it's time to one more poll, so I will pass on to Sam, please. Thank you, Ganesh. Uh, yeah, to give Ganesh another break, we're gonna launch another poll. And this will be our last poll, and we kind of wanna know uh, what animal models do you currently use in your research, if any? Uh, we have a selection 
uh, mice, rats, rabbits, other small animals. Some of you may be doing research with large animals. That could be pigs, canine, horses, uh, perhaps non-human primates, um, perhaps other animals that we may not have, not have mentioned. And finally, none. Uh, some of you may not be doing uh, preclinic or animal model research. i uh, just give you guys uh, 10 more seconds. Seems like the majority do rodent um, research uh, using mouse and uh, rat models. Uh, which is uh, ideal since this is uh, presentation does touch upon the uh, mouse model. Uh, okay, since it seems like mostly everyone has um, answered, so I'm going to send this back to uh, Ganesh. All right, thank you, Sam. Now, uh, as we study the mouse model, but obviously we envision that how to translate to heart failure patients. For that one, we study. Uh, all these mediators, what I have mentioned in humans. But here we considered two different uh, variables, like one is uh, obvious male and female. And then the second one is uh, white and black as a race, one of the important variables, because we all know that the blacks or the African Americans are more susceptible to the different cardiovascular disease. Now, this is a study design and what we notice, these inclusion criteria is, uh, inclusion criteria is the myocardial infarction event and the samples collected within uh, 24 to 48 hours with high levels of troponin and the complete blood count also measured as well as the different lipid panels, including LDL, HDL, triglyceride and cholesterol and kidney functions. To our surprise, all these four groups black, white, male, and female, there is no difference in all these four groups. Of course, there is higher troponin in all four groups. Now, when we measure the all lipid mediators by using the lipidomics platform, fatty acids, monohydroxy fatty acids, and specialized prosolving mediators, we notice that these white individuals after the heart attack, they have a higher levels of resolving E species, as well as the black individuals have lower levels of protecting D1, indicating that lipid mediators are important to classify the race and sex specific markers in response to myocardial infarction. Also important indication that the inflammation and resolution begin at the same point when there is injury and that can be used precisely and personally to treat the individuals. Now, with this one, I would like to summarize that what I have shown you, the splenic leukocyte directed acute inflammatory response in cardiac healing because leukocytes mobilize to the heart and biosynthesize SPMs to facilitate cardiac repair. And if there is a risk factor like obesity, and that is a superimposed on aging that leads to dysregulated resolution of inflammation, obviously non-resolving inflammation, and the co-medication like the carprofane, and which is common in the humans, that leads to the neutrophil activation, thereby non-resolving inflammation, and the different bioactive lipids uh, in heart patients serve as a unique uh, sex and risk specific signatures for the future diagnostic purpose. Uh, with this one, I would like to thank my team members, uh, Dr. Kane, Boshra, uh, Amanda P. Pulain, C. Mood on to the nursing, my collaborators, uh, Charles Surhan from Harvard Medical School, and my former colleagues at the UAB, uh, Dr. Aurora, Lundy, Oprel Prabhu, and Tanja, and many friends and mentors uh, in this journey of heart failure. And also, of course, uh, the funding agency, uh, including NIH and the APS and CAM. And also, I would like to thank you, all of you. I know you are in a different parts of the world, so you have a different timing of the day. So thank you for taking opportunity to attend this webinar. And also, thank you to Sentika for providing the opportunity to share my work. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Ganesh. Uh, we're going to take this opportunity to uh, 
host a, a question and answer. So I encourage everyone to uh, ask questions in the Q&A dialogue box below. So we'll have about 15 minutes to get through as many questions as possible during this time. So uh, Ganesh, thank you again. Um, I'll begin by asking this question. Um, so as the resolution mediators are derived from omega-3 fatty acids, and I know many individuals take fish oil products or eat fish, do they have better cardiovascular health or improved resolution by taking uh, omega-3 fatty acids? Now that's a very fantastic and very obvious question. Uh, we get very commonly uh, that whether, and definitely if we are eating or supplementing with the fish oil, uh, most commonly we have a positive impact and it's determined since 1970, that is the first uh, observational study. But at the same time, sometimes there are some negative literature. And the real reason is that as number of uh, medications interfere with the process. And another, during our early research, we learned that these lipoxygenase are essential for the biosynthesis of a specialized for resolving mediators. So if the immune system for some reason is not activated on time, so the lipoxygenase will not be activated. Therefore, the specialized for resolving mediators will not be biosynthesized. So therefore, it depends on the level of lipoxygenase activation. Therefore, some individuals are responsive to the fish oil intake and they are seeing the benefit, but some of the individuals not because either they are obese or they are old or for some reason due to co-medication or sedentary lifestyle, these lipoxygenase are non-functional. So the, in short, my answer is yes, definitely there is a benefit of the omega-3 product provided our lipoxygenase are functional or we are not adding number of variables or risk factors for the, for dysfunctioning the lipoxygenase. Yes, so definitely uh, the omega-3 products have a positive impact uh, on the cardiac health. Okay, great. Good to know. Uh, one of the attendees, Tamara, asked, uh, is there any evidence that inflammatory mediators are synthesized in heart in addition to being produced in the spleen? What are your thoughts, Ganesh? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, they are not produced in absence of injury, definitely in response to injury. Uh, even if they are, they would, there is a possibility uh, that they are varying during the day and night cycle because we have measured as a snapshot uh, at during the daytime, which is uh, nighttime for the mice. But if you there is a one paper, uh, and I'm not sure that they have measured in the mice, particularly in the heart, all the lipid mediators. But I believe that every morning our immune system is relatively more active. During that time, probably we may see some of the inflammatory mediator in absence of injury. But in uh, most commonly, these mediators are absent in the heart. Okay. Uh, another attendee asks, can chronic inflammation remote from the heart cause myocardium dysfunction? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, that is a very classical example. What we notice that if the receptor which is required for SPM activation. Now we are in the early stage of research and we are just beginning this research uh, four or five years ago. So we are in a very early stage. So what we notice uh, next step, when this SPM has to serve as a key and there is a lock, it has to work on the lock as a receptor. And when that receptor is not present, then also leads to the chronic inflammation. An example is when the resolving D1 acts through a formal peptide receptor. And when this formal peptide receptor is not present in the mice, then what we notice, these mice develop the age-related obesity, and also the heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which is very common in obese population. Their heart 
function is perfectly fine, but there is a multi-organ inflammation, including the spleen, kidney, adipose tissue, liver, and you name it. So that the multi-organ inflammation is leading to the cardiac dysfunction or heart failure, which is the perfect example of heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction. Interesting. Uh, do you think that uh, menopausal state may influence the production of resolution biomarkers? Yes, definitely. Uh, because the, as the cycle stops, um, the immune, pro immune function, every month there is a priming of immune function. So the immune function is getting to relatively sort of inert stage, uh, particularly in the menopausal woman. So therefore, definitely there is change, but I don't think there are any studies done in the humans. Uh, there are only two studies done humans in relevance to the SPMs. One is a time kinetics from just Dali's group, uh, from Europe and the second one is from ours, uh, race and spe sex specific uh, differences after myocardial infarction. But definitely that's a very interesting point to study in future. But I believe definitely there will be a difference in postmenopausal women. And speaking of SPMs, uh, do you know what is the downstream signaling pathway of SPMs and how does it change in heart failure? Oh, one downstream signaling is we are evaluating is the receptors. And one immediate receptor for the resolving D1 is the formal peptide receptor. Because if the formal peptide receptor is dysregulated, even because of the aging or the co-medication or just by dysfunction, by genetic modification, then also leads to the unresolved inflammation. So the downstream signaling is humongous because every SPM moiety has a precise receptor. So once that SPM moiety is formed, then it needs some lock because SPM moiety as serves as a key. So to open that lock, if it is not present, and that lock may be on cardiomyocyte, that may be on neutrophils, that may be on uh, macrophages. So those receptors is a uh, kind of in a process of advancing because this is a quite new field, uh, relatively unstudied. Uh, so we are advancing uh, to some degree in a heart failure, but in the infection or in a different area is advancing. Definitely there are very complex downstream signaling, more focused on the receptor biology. Hmm. Uh, and another attendee is wondering if you have looked at the source of monocyte in the bone marrow in the levels of SPM. Mm, no, oh, no, we have not. Definitely. That's an interesting question that we have not seen bone marrow, but down the line, uh, it's an interesting point to see uh, whether there is activation of SPMs in bone marrow. Some people have studied in the bone marrow that there is a SPM content particularly from Charles Sirhan group, they have measured in the NIU state, but we have not studied in response to MI or injury state. There should be some paper uh, in context of infection, uh, but not in the cardiovascular field or the heart failure field in response to MI that somebody measured the SPM content in the bone marrow. But I'm, I believe there should be activation uh, of the SPMs even in the bone marrow. Okay. Um, I, another user or attendee asked this question. I'm actually curious as well. Is physical exercise and diet and act as anti-inflammatory? Yes. Uh, physical exercise and the diet serve as anti-inflammatory. Yes. Uh, provided hopefully your diet is not enriched with omega-6 fatty acids, then it will nullify the, your exercise effect. So if you are uh, doing the exercise, definitely. There is a very nice study just published uh, last a year or last couple of months from Jason Hellman, uh, University of Louisville. He's studied exercise and SPM. So definitely the SPMs has a tremendous role. 
uh, and our daily bout of exercise uh, increase the SPMs uh, early in the morning. Even without exercise, even if we are following the daily routine, if our sleep cycle is perfect, then SPMs are biosynthesized early in the morning and takes care for the whole day. And again, when we go to sleep, then again, body takes rest and the morning it's biosynthesized. And likewise, the exercise induces the biosynthesis of the SPMs, definitely. But the diet needs to be the quality of diet so we can providing the precursors required for the SPMs. Good to know. Definitely will be going for a run this afternoon. Uh, Rajaran asks, how about the cardiac tissue resident macrophages effect during the inflammation resolution? Uh, that's a very important question. During the resolution, we have not distinguished between the resident and the infiltrated macrophages. Now I'm giving the theoretical answer and that might be a different, but I believe that these SPMs products are dependent on the fatty acid intake. Now, whether the it is a resident macrophages or the infiltrate macrophages, and if they have a precise lipoxygenase, that macrophages will not distinguish, hey, I'm not going to take DHA or AA and I will make only the pro-inflammatory mediator. And I believe that the activated macrophages in response to MI, they both will make SPMs when the body is needed because body's role is always to take it to the homeostasis. Once the resident macrophages and the infiltrated macrophages, they both are activated because of injury and they both will be expressing lipoxygenase and the converting fatty acids into the lipid mediators. So my short answer is a speculative, of course required exploration or further investigation that both infiltrated and the residential macrophages will serve the same role because they are activated in response to injury and convert the SPM precursor into the SPM moiety to take body to the homeostasis and facilitate the cardiac repair. Awesome, well, that's a great response. Um, we have time for one or two more questions. Um, this most recent one came in, have you checked the role of T cells in heart failure? Oh, not we, uh, we have, uh, uh, one of the collaborator, Dr. Prabhu uh, at the UAB, he is studying more in T cells and one pillar alkyd from Boston. So those investigators are uh, studying the T cells and there are many more. Uh, we have not reached to the T cell yet uh, in terms of resolution and there are recent upcoming papers are in atherosclerosis, but we have not studied the T cells. We are more focused uh, on early healing or acute response uh, and integrative approach. But definitely that's an interesting question to study the, whether how the T cells are involved in resolution of inflammation, particularly in a chronic heart failure. Uh, and we have time for one last question. Um, if not injury, uh, just aging alone, would you be able to see those inflammation changes in heart, in the heart? Mm. Likely we can see some variation in the substrate um, because what happens is uh, as we age and in the mice, I'm talking first in the mice world because these studies are impossible to do in the humans like uh, nobody will give the heart. So what we notice in the uh, mice that as the mice old becomes old that there is low levels of resident macrophages or the macrophages content vary. If the macrophages are pro-inflammatory and, and those individuals or the mice are supplemented with the omega-6 or the diet which is high salt or any different diet, and that is altering the lipoxygenase expression or the content, definitely they will have a variation of those mediators. But another important point uh, needs to be noted here that these mediators are immune responsive. So if you're 
immune response is activated on time, then definitely you are going to detect it. Then another thing, if the immune response is uh, failed to activate, so the initiation, if there is a failure of initiation of inflammation, then also we are not going to see those uh, lipid mediators, whether it is pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. First step is the activation of the immune system is the most important step. And then we can see the inflammation and resolution depending on the activation uh, of the lipoxygenase and the substrate availability at that point. So I believe that uh, it, the most important primary step to see these mediators, even though there is aging, if the lipoxygenase and substrate are precisely intact, definitely we will see even though there is aging. Okay, great, great response. And uh, that takes us to the uh, one hour mark. So thank you, Ganesh. Um, and thank you, everyone, um, for joining us today. And we want to be respectful of everyone's time. So we will wrap things up. As mentioned at the start of our webinar, we will be sure to answer any outstanding questions privately with anyone waiting for a response. And we will also publish a written transcript of all questions and answers from our Q&A session. I'd like to thank Ganesh again for his interesting and incredibly informative presentation. Please feel free to reach out to us directly. Should you have any questions about the methodology used to acquire the in vivo data represented by Ganesh during his presentation? And thanks again to all of you for taking time out of your day today to attend our session. We look forward to seeing you at a future Syntec instrumentation event. Have a great day, everyone.